Good afternoon. I'm very pleased to have with me today Hamish Davis. He's the Global Chief Growth and Marketing Officer at Wavemaker. Hamish, welcome to Exchange for Media. Hi, thank you very much for talking to me. Great, great thank to you so connect. Much for taking the time out. And I just want to ask you first, you're very closely involved in the pitching processes globally at Wavemaker. In your view, how has the process changed over the last few years? Um, yeah, so I've been doing this role for six years, and um, over that time, I've seen quite a, a, a major evolution of, of the way things are going. I mean, the fundamentals are still the same. People want to have a great progressive offer. They want to work with people they like, uh, uh, talent-wise, and they need to get good value. So those, those fundamentals have not changed. What has changed, obviously, is with the, the technology advancements, just the, the sheer pivot of our business from from fairly standard planning and buying through to a very progressive offer very digitally centric uh end-to-end -end solutions um and uh importantly increasingly consultancy services so higher grade needs which which you know weren't on the radar uh five week, five years ago so things the fundamentals are the same but actually it's getting more complex you know, you mentioned that uh, things that weren't on the radar five years ago. Uh, so what does the client expect from an agency now? I, I think it's the full, certainly for a big network provider like, like us. So we're part of Group M, largest, largest by far in India, and uh, a very big network in its own right for Wavemaker India, and the same position elsewhere. The expectations for, for the big networks like us is to provide all, all services that are likely to be required. So obviously core planning and buying, end-to-end -end solutions in terms of uh, uh, audience, audience and data work into platforms and then seamless delivery. So true end-to-end -end solutions and, and then consultancy services. So be that anything from uh, addressability or content or uh, like applied innovation. So a lot of the progressive areas, AI, how to use how to use the metaverse effectively, all those kind of higher grade needs, which you know just didn't exist three or four years ago. Now there is an ex expectation that us as a network uh, should and and can deliver those well. So it's uh, yeah, that's it. A big part of the pitching process is the price point that uh, you go to with the uh, to the client. So is price still the biggest considering when it, uh, consideration when it comes to the pitching process? I, it's not about price, it's about value, okay? So we have, to, we have to deliver true value. So an element of the value is of course, uh, media pricing. And Group M is in a fortunate position because of market share that we can provide that sort of hygiene of really great pricing, but it's about value too. It's about, it's about overall value. It's about the talent we provide, the caliber of that talent, the cost of that talent, the commercials, and also the opportunities that we can provide in terms of outcomes-based solutions as well. Historically, yes, it's been about, you know, making sure that the price is, 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 is as low as possible, the value as high as possible. As a, as a business now, we are pivoting more to outcomes-based models. So actually, you know, don't pay us for what the offer is, pay us for what we deliver to you. Um, it's, it's early days still, but as more and more digitizes and there is more direct link between the investment made in advertising and the delivery of, of, of sales or whatever the, the matrix is for that campaign, we can join those things up better in a digital environment so we can shift more to an outcomes-based model. That's a really is, which, interesting... It's very interesting what you said, don't pay us for what we offer, but pay us for what we deliver. Can you uh, just elaborate on that? Because, you know, with tighter budgets and focus now on ROI or rather now on delivery, yeah. I was wondering with innovation and creativity, uh, how do you deliver the value? Well, this, the challenge is, is how we actually can measure that and how we can get that, that um, cause and effect uh, dynamic. So... In an old analog world, that was pretty much impossible. You could do retrospectric econo uh, econometrics to, to kind of show M&M model, uh, uh, modeling that could show 
to a degree what had happened in the past and what 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 made the uh, the action happen so the cause and effect but it was all retrospective in a digital world you can do that in real time um so again connecting up in the performance world now of what activity you do and what what response you get and as we get smarter with that we can actually build business models based on on outcomes outcomes um outcomes which is you know ultimately what the client wants the client wants to get maximum return from their investment so if we can guarantee an, in, an outcome or if we can uh, at least be uh, uh, remunerated on an outcomes base then that's a, a win-win for both parties you know that's the uh, ultimate goal of activity is to drive outcomes you know now with technology being the center of conversations and you know with chat chat gpt and uh, ai being the centerpiece of all conversations as uh, what excites you how do you see this evolving oh it's it's such early days i mean i mean we've we've been um working with ai for, for several years now in terms of our optimization systems we have an amazing tool called architect which um which optimizes uh which which helps craft audiences optimizes those audiences to to uh media channels and comes out with a with a with great optimized media plans and solutions so we've been working on that from a functional basis but a very important bit because it's very much the core business for us um we've been doing that for years so we we in the short term or now see huge efficiencies and and effectiveness gains by doing by allowing machines to do things that that are better done by machines than humans okay what that allows us to do is to take out some of the functional roles that used to be done by humans uh, and now is now done better by computers but it allows the humans we have to to actually use their time to do more creativity more more um more of the the differentiators that really going to make a difference in in terms of effectiveness more creativity more times of strategic solutions so it just allows us to spend less time on the on the operation and functional aspects and more time on the on the on the thinking and creativity so that's that's the first big change for us as a business um in terms of how ai can really fundamentally change the business in terms of creation of of addressable content and content and creative and all the other areas that it could potentially get involved in it's very early days for us but we are we are seeing some very exciting opportunities come through with the initial campaigns that we are really deploying ai in its in its kind of new new sense one example of that we're doing is now for the for the british royal navy and they had a real challenge in recruiting diverse audiences to to the navy so more women more ethnic minorities people from different uh, socioeconomic groups it was it was quite a a bastion of of kind of white male and and the royal navy were very keen to diversify that to to really embrace and reflect british society now so they have they now deploy with the help of wave maker in the uk a bot which basically helps the recruitment process over over a 12 month period when you're looking to go into the armed forces it's a very long recruitment process but what we've developed we is a, is a bot that helps um first first attract uh, and engage new 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 audiences but then keeps them keeps a discussion going a dialogue dialogue going with the prospects throughout the 12 month recruitment process and that has proved i, I can't go into specifics for confidentiality reasons but i can't uh, but um what that is proving to be is hugely effective for recruitment uh, for 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 initial recruitment but then importantly keeping people throughout the process um so their their roi has just in in the areas where focus have just gone through the roof which is amazing um but importantly it's also generating so many more insights that then the royal navy are using throughout their throughout their organization so you know these are just a few of the initial campaigns that we're we're truly unleashing the power of ai and what we're seeing now is is very exciting so i think you know smart application for different types of communication challenges is going to it, it really is going to have a have a like a step change in effectiveness and a step change in the way we do things going forward 
Uh, are there any examples from India or from close or from the APAC region that you'd like to share with us? I think arguably our best case study worldwide. Uh, not, I mean, not even arguably, it is our best case study worldwide. Is the work we did with Shara Khan for for Cadbury's Dairy Milk uh, during the pandemic, and the the work he did in terms of uh, optimize uh, addressable solutions to a very micro level across India, uh, promoting small businesses. It, it, it won the uh, Titanium Lion in 2022 at Cannes, and then won again for for ROI effectiveness in 2023. Um, so it was great to see that, our, you know, the, some of the very best work is coming out of India uh, through Wavemaker and, and Ogilvy uh, in partnership. So, yeah, I think that's our, our, probably our best example. Uh, from being a media agency, Wavemaker is now positioned as a brand consultant. So how does this positioning help Wavemaker and your clients? <laughs> I, I think it goes back to the, uh, the first question you said in terms of the expectations of our major multi-market clients, uh, multinational clients, and also a lot of the, a lot of the lo local ones too, is that a modern media agency needs to be, uh, needs to cover all, all areas of communication and, and where things are going. So we have set up a consultancy community, uh, which is headquartered between New York and London, but then every major market, including India, has these services. Which, which are areas outside the core business, but absolutely fundamental to the, to the growth. So uh, applied innovation would be, would be a good example of, of one of the key areas of that consultancy hub, where we work with clients to experiment in new areas of, of, of uh, media and tech that are really gonna make a difference. So last year, obviously a lot of work about the metaverse. This year, it's been a lot about, a lot about AI. Um, but it's, it's a division that's always looking what's next. Uh, and we always encourage our clients to experiment at the earliest opportunity. Um, so, uh, yeah, this, this consultancy group looks at this content, addressability, all types of data tools and technology. Uh, and we're finding that that really helps us to stay ahead and, and, and make sure that we can get in there first, get the learnings, because those, those learnings, the timeline between innovation and, and, and then mass activation are getting shorter and shorter. So we need to be in there quick and then we need to scale up fast. You hold dual roles, global chief growth officer as well as chief marketing officer. How do both these roles complement each other? Okay. So importantly, we, we work in a very uh, competitive category, uh, competitive in terms of clients but competitive in terms of talent as well so it's really important that every effort we do is focused on making sure that wavemaker is seen as an amazing destination for clients and amazing destination for talent so as such we wanted to make sure that everything we do from a marketing perspective is 100 percent focused on driving growth for our talent and our clients and our new business so by putting those two roles together the initiatives I do, I know are going to be right to drive uh, uh, talent, to get more talent in, to retain the talent we have, and also to make sure that when we do initiatives for uh, at, a, at a public level, uh, in terms of PR and other elements, they're very much focused on the type, type of client partners we want in the future. So by bringing those two together, it allows you to have a single message across all, all areas. So what is the growth that you're looking, uh, looking at in the short term and the long term in terms of client conditions, growth? So um, we, we tend to focus on, on two areas. So sort of traditional categories, um, uh, we're very strong in, in, in FMCG. Uh, we want to extend across more of the traditional categories, uh, but we've been particularly successful in new economy clients. Uh, and new econ uh, and where we've been successful is really going for new economy clients that need to scale up uh, globally or, or, or on a local level. So I would say, yeah, we are very good at all the core business categories, but where we've seen most growth in recent years has been um, with, with new economy clients uh, and where they come to us is when, we're, when they're ready to scale up uh, and that's new markets, new territories. So, for example, 
we've been looking after Netflix since since the day one of Netflix when they were sending out DVDs in the mail. And they'll see things have changed now. We look after Netflix across 30 odd, odd markets. Um, DoorDash, one of the biggest delivery food delivery businesses in the world. Uh, we, we started a relationship with them and now extending that relationship as they expand to, uh, to international territories. Um, and other, other businesses like Coinbase and others where we, again, we get them when they are already relatively successful in a, in a, in a, in a, in a domestic setting and then require rapid scale up uh, across the network. And that's where we've, we found a sweet spot. And we like to think we are the destination within Group M for, uh, for new economy clients. And uh, just a word on the, on the team in India. I think uh, I think we have an amazing business in India. I mean, first of all, I think we, we already mentioned the Shara Khan Cadbury's work. I mean, they do some exceptional work. India is responsible for uh, a big, big chunk of our awards globally. They are one of the most successful in terms of great work. Uh, and I, I always say uh, to all my other countries, you need to be more Indian when it comes to like celebrating great work because uh, they're, they're benchmark. But in terms of new business, they've also had a very, a very, uh, very successful. I mean, they've always been a major player in India, um, and uh, this year has been no exception. I mean, this year they've already picked up Rickett. Uh, they retained Perno Rickar, which is a hugely uh, prestigious piece of business for us that we're very happy to to um, to have retained and grow from there. There's KRBL, the big basmati rice uh, local champion, which is uh, very important to a lot of Indians. Um, but also they picked up a, a long tail of smaller pieces of business, work for Johnson & Johnson and Crunchyroll and, and others. So those guys are on a roll right now. And I, I, um, they're one of the markets I get most excited about. I was, I was down in Mumbai a few weeks ago and uh, just, just learning how, how they do things because they've got a a unique way of doing things, but they're highly successful. Uh, finally, you know, you mentioned the, uh, the team Wavemaker India is on the roll, but what's the challenge to, you know, continue this, uh, this the, the speed at which they've grown and retaining clients and winning new clients? What is the challenge in doing that? Um, I, I would like to talk about opportunities first, because, I mean, you've got to call out India as, as the now the most populous nation in the world. There is, you know, India is in the next few years, I think is going to join the, the, the Premier League when it comes to just a power in the industry. Uh, just, just pure demographics is nothing else alone. I mean, already I'm seeing this year, India is our third most successful market um, uh, in terms of new business. US is first. Obviously, the US volume is always very high, but uh, India, uh, US is first. Then, then China, no great surprise. But India now ranks number three in terms of, of new business growth for us worldwide. And I, I, I see a lot more potential, uh, not only because of the demographics, which are you know, hugely important, but also in the progressive uh, mentality of the, of, the, of, the, of the country. I'm seeing a lot of entrepreneurialism, a lot of exciting things happening in the digital space. So, you know, it's a very exciting country uh, to there's you know there's there's a downsize as well you know it tends to be quite bureaucratic and other things you know but it's like overall the the outlook for India I think is very very positive so um, I look at it as a market where I think it's just going to grow and grow for us uh, in in future years very excited by it thank you so much for your time it was a pleasure talking to you my my pleasure too.